I'm like, Quite nervous broadcast. I haven't done a Google Hangout. Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Elite Entrepreneur Show this week. Are you ready for some straightforward marketing results? Hi, I'm Luke Charlton, CEO of Zag Coaching, and of course, your host for the Elite Entrepreneur Show. As you can see, if you've been tuning in for the last couple of weeks, it's a bit of a different background this time because. I'm uh, coming to you, this, this broadcast is coming to you all the way from London. Whereas the last few weeks it's been in Australia where I was with friends and family and working with clients and running some events. And um, now I'm in London. So I got here a ago. I'm uh, still a little bit jet lagged. Was up at about wide awake this morning about 4 a.m. <laughs> doing work and whatnot. Um, no choice of my own. But anyway. I'm here in London, glad to be glad to be home, but uh, only for a couple of weeks. Actually, I'll show you a, a cool pic, a pic, a picture of um, of Sydney when I left a couple of days ago. I'll just share my screen again. Um, so this is a picture of of uh, Sydney Airport, and that's Sydney in the in the background there. Um, so I took that a couple of days ago, leaving from Australia. Now, it's these. I really like the, the theme of tonight, uh, this straightforward marketing result. And it really is these straightforward marketing systems that I use that have enabled me to uh, build this lifestyle business where I can travel around the world and work from Sydney or London or uh, Vegas, where I'm going again in a couple of weeks. And um, it it really comes down to I think a lot of people overcomplicate business. When it gets when it becomes too complicated, uh, that's when it, it begins to break down. And it's these simple systems that I use to help build my business that enable me to uh, get uh, speaking gigs like this one here, where I gave a presentation at the Entrepreneurs Group in Canberra. The same systems that and this is me showing them my uh, Map to Wealth coaching model our renegade business system to help anyone build a, an ROIT or return on invested time lifestyle business. And it's the same straightforward systems that enable me to uh, run my own and fill my one day intensive events. So I'll bring, I'll bring you back to, to me for a second. So why I bring this up is because it's not me that's getting these, these results, it's these step-by-step -step systems that I use. So I'm very very keen to bring on our guest tonight who is an expert in basically straightforward marketing results. Now remember, this show is for you, the viewer. So please, if you're watching live, come over to EliteEntrepreneurShow.com and we will be able to answer uh, your questions. If you have any of those burning questions for our guest coming on, please come over to EliteEntrepreneurShow.com and, um, and we'll interact live and you can ask any questions. So this show is for you. This, these, this show is for you to get results to grow your business. So in saying that, please let me welcome my guest. He is the founder and creator of one of the world's largest meetup groups. I think it's actually the world's largest psychological or psychology meetup group. He's a regular on BBC Radio. He's also a a coach, a hypnotherapist, and trained in many different aspects around hypnotherapy and NLP. And he's got, um, he's also a motivational speaker as well, a great speaker. I've seen him speak. So, would you please welcome our guest tonight on the Elite Entrepreneur Show, all the way from London, where I am at the moment, Matt Kendall. How are you going, mate? I'm doing very well. I'll just correct you on one thing there. Yeah. I'm not a motivational speaker by any means. Um, oh, really? I, I, oh, I don't really believe in motivation. And stuff. <laughs> um, just to, and I'm, I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily I'm a coach. I don't like to coach people. I can tell people what to do, but not on uh, coaching. I'm not qualified in coaching by any means. I'm qualified in therapy and brief therapy. Uh, okay. Like, uh, but I I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a coach. And, uh, Hang on. I, <laughs> Hang on, I swear it says on your on your uh, website that you're a motivational speaker. I swear it does somewhere. Um, the, what website do you, is that? What on LinkedIn? 
Ah, uh, no, that's all right. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I may. Have, you know, I may have put that. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> that's all right. That's <laughs> right. Anyway, it's not anyway, like Matt. If you want to be motivated, you're the wrong shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have seen you speak, and I can see only I, I can see exactly what you're saying. <laughs> Just believe in yourself; it'll all be all right. <laughs> Very straight. <Yeah. laughs> it won't. Things will keep getting worse. <laughs> so, okay, Matt. Uh, let's get straight into it. So, we're talking about straightforward marketing results. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what what give? Like, this is the question that I ask all my guests coming on. What gives you the right to call yourself an expert in getting straightforward marketing results? Okay, good question. I uh, I don't think I've ever called myself an expert. Maybe <laughs> maybe in some interesting sort of copy or email, I may I may have said that, but I, I don't class myself as being an expert. Um, I don't really know what an expert means, to be perfectly honest. I'm somebody who actually does things, and the the best way for me to say why why do I say this is to simply judge me by what I've done and what I'm doing. Um, that's the you know, you know figures don't lie. I'm a very analytical person when it comes to uh, business, making money, setting up businesses, and marketing. So I I'm sort of kind of half soft self uh, self self taught. <laughs> so uh, I do all my own speeches. And I'm, I'm I'm half kind of self taught, and I'm also half um, educated through listening to a whole variety of marketing materials. Um, but basically, as I began to learn about marketing, I realized I was doing several of the um, structures or techniques or systems, whatever you want to call them, naturally. Um, I just now had names for them, like referral systems and testimonials and um, you know three-step lettuces. So I actually had names of things I was already doing. So I learned how to market very early on. I started when I was 21, running... Because it was my money involved in stuff, and my dad was an accountant, and um, he actually went off to do, he was very entrepreneurial. He actually went off to be a professional speaker after he retired as a bank manager. But so as I was growing up, I learned the value of money and not to waste it, and not not to sort of be mean with money, but not to, you know, if you're going to invest in something, you're going to do something, make sure that the figures work, so you know you get paid at the end of it. So I've kind of always approached things that I've done from a business perspective where other people benefit from what I'm doing. So I do like working with creative people in a sense where they benefit as well. But I have to make sure that the figures work, that the the because if not what well, you know, if I know a lot of people are kind of scared of profit, but even charities make profit. And profit is just one way that you know, if you're doing things right, you are making a profit. And even even if you just reinvest that profit back into what you're doing you still should be making a profit in whatever you're doing. If not, if that's not a business, it's well, it's an expensive hobby that you have instead. So I kind of, um, yes, yeah, so I started off running, you know, uh, like, you know band nights and um, uh, sort of uh, club nights and things like that, you know, when I was like 21. Mm -hmm. And I learned by pounding the streets, handing out flyers, taking, you know, if you think about that, that was like sort of 10 years ago when I, when I was doing well. How old was I? No. Three in a week. Uh, so yeah, about sort of uh, about twenty, about twenty one, twenty two, when I was doing this. So I was leaving university. So yeah, so about twenty one, twenty two. And um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I'd go out and pound the streets and learn how to sort of generate traffic because I had to generate real traffic because you know, ten years ago, the internet, <laughs> anything like you know, Facebook's only got seven years old, and so I didn't have things like the internet. So now, even with um, that's what I've done, and I'm sure it'll get mentioned. And I don't want people to think this is just me selling a product. It's really not. Whether you buy it or not, it's not really going to affect me anyway, you know. But I've actually created the straightforward marketing system. And basically, it's how you build a business from the idea of building a business. And hmm. you know, and I'm not one for reinventing the wheel. I'm one for like looking what's already working and then utilizing it. But I believe in a lot of kind of old-fashioned marketing. Um, have you ever read Scientific Marketing by? But Scientific Marketing was one of my favourite books, and that was written, you know, forties or fifties. And you know, so I, I used to read a lot of the marketing stuff from back then, a lot of sort of like Dan Kennedy stuff and uh, you know, sort of Jay Abraham. And I used to like all that old, kind of old school copywriting. And so the stuff which I do now translates over to the internet and onto social media, but. 
the marketing systems that I help new businesses especially to sort of establish are time tested structured systems that if your internet if your internet went down things would still work things would still happen or might get your email and stuff but it's actually designed to be like a robust system so I think that new businesses these days focus far too much on social media mm. uh, especially if they're a service based business yeah. of, a, of a local um, area I can't think of a better word for it but basically so if you're like if you know if you're setting up a, a shop or I suppose a shop can do delivery and stuff, but if you're setting up, say, it's like a plumber or a hypnotherapist or something like that, you don't need to do that much social media because there's no point somebody in Africa looking at your sales copy for how you stop people smoking. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I think a lot of people kind of forget to do offline marketing and they don't have any real systems in place or any PR and use it properly. And um, I just think that sort of... Social media is good. The only thing I use social media for is to get email leads. So to, I have like, so I do Facebook marketing, and basically we use um, a, a fantastic tool. If anybody wants to learn how to make landing pages, in fact, the landing page I've made for today is made by something called Lead Pages. Mm. It's a fantastic right. tool. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're constructing whole mini websites just out of Lead Pages themselves. It, it, you know, people can go look onto that. It's called leadpages.com. and start creating really nice landing pages that we then sync in with a mail server and we use Aweber. Um, others are very, very well, no, I'm on no affiliate with them. And um, so the thing is I do internet, um, I do marketing on Facebook, but the whole point of marketing on Facebook is to get somebody's email address. Mm -hmm. And you've got to remember that when people are on social media, they're not necessarily looking to buy anything. They're on there just because they're on there. So with social media, what I've been learning is it's about starting a relationship with potential clients. It's not about selling. You actually want to get people from the social media element onto your mailing list when you then open that conversation and you then begin to continue to market to them via email. And when you email, you can also include videos, you know, video links, downloads, things like that. So, for an example, if like on... Um, what's one I had going recently? Oh, okay. Well, we have one. I, I did this marketing product called Straightforward Marketing System, and it's the same thing which I'm going to give away today. And basically, these are seven resources that I've spent ten years, thousands of pounds, and hundreds of thousands of hours developing, finding out, working out to find these seven little resources. And most of them are free. And you know, you may not have heard of some of them. So some book recommendations, some website recommendations. And I think they're all free. I think. And um, I give this away as a free report or a free PDF. So if you're doing um, relationship marketing, the first thing you have to do is give away something of real value. Of course. And so uh, a free report is great. You know, for any industry, you can give a free report away that you write. And it's not about selling your services. It's just simply about providing good content uh, for somebody. So say with hypnotherapy, so say that, say that I set up a Facebook page um, and so with hypnotherapy, you've got to choose what you're doing in there because you've got spider, you know, uh, phobias, you know, weight loss, smoking, um, oh, every, you know what I mean? There's so much stuff. So I specialize in social anxiety, and that's all I do. So let's just say I was going to do a marketing campaign on Facebook for social anxiety. What I would do is I would have a Facebook fan page, and that might be like social anxiety help. Dot com or no, not dot com, but social anxiety help make a nice little header. And then I'd put in a lead page, and basically in that lead page, I'd have a free report the the two new ways to stop anxiety instantly that you can do anytime and anywhere. Well, these two new tricks to stop anxiety or the seven few things to stop doing anxiety. So basically, you want to give away something that's good. So two, like two things, two, three, five, or seven things work really well. Odd number. So, yeah, you know, and it's usually like the seven keys, the five secrets, or, you know. So, <laughs> but basically, make it good. And, and don't make it about you, because nobody cares about you, in a sense. It's about, how, you know, what do people, what can you offer them? And all you need to do is then put that onto a lead page where people enter their name and email and go onto an email. And then you can actually have an email sequence that emails them out time after time after time. And then from those emails, that builds that relationship for you. And that can also link to your blog posts. It can link to your videos that you put up. So basically, actually, you know, when people come to see me for therapy, they know so much about me. 
um, because they've had to go through testimonials, they've had to listen to past interviews, they've read testimonials, they've read blog posts, and the power of this means that if you do it properly, when people come to you, you're not selling. They're already sold. No. You're just simply working out the payment or the, you know what I mean? You're not doing, I don't do any selling. I don't, I don't, I don't like selling, to be honest. If I'm selling, my marketing hasn't worked properly. Mm. Okay? Yeah, and um, so you're saying, uh, going back to what you were saying about um, uh, not, I, I tend to agree with you in that if someone's starting to build a business from scratch, a coach, consultant, speaker, mm -hmm. or trainer from mm -hmm. scratch, then relying on, on social media to do that I think is not the right way of going about it. I think that, as you mentioned, there should be an effort to also build a good foundation offline as well as online as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, building a business, relationships is the name of the game. And social Absolutely. media is a way to kind of engage with your audience, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily the fastest way to build your business, I don't believe. But I, I do agree with you that you need to have uh, start building that email list mm -hmm. and, um, and then build a relationship through your email list as well. So, Matt, what... Um, what do you do when you're, so you mentioned, uh, we were speaking about this, uh, I think I was speaking about this before with you, that you're not, um, I don't know if you actually, you're, you don't position, you don't call yourself like a marketing coach or a business coach or no, anything no. along those lines, you just help people because uh, you're naturally good at it, that's why you have like this straightforward uh, marketing mm -hmm. system. Yeah, so that's right. When, when you were looking at a new business, like if you were going back um, and starting a business from scratch, how would you how would you begin to where, where would you go first? Let's, let's, if we say that we're looking at a, a coach a coach's business, okay. Um, where, where how where would you start with that? All right, okay. So um, let's get some information here. So let's let all right. Let me say that I'm consulting with you. And by the way, if anyone's listening. I don't offer consultations. I'm not a coach. I'm not. I'm really not. I made the thing is before I get into this. The reason why I actually do a one-day marketing course in in uh, London. Um, it's just four hours, and basically, I then put all that. We made it much bigger actually, but we made an actual product for it. Although I love marketing, I like running businesses more, and I don't want to be somebody who just makes money out of selling marketing because I don't really. You know, it's basically I want to I want to learn about marketing, and then I use that to to market other businesses. That's the, the whole thing I do. Um, however, I do like marketing. I like telling people about marketing, and I thought rather than just doing the workshops all the time, I'll just make a product, and then people can have it. It's like it's a one-time fee, but you get, you get forever access, and we're going to put updates on webinars and things on there as well. But it's just like it's a real good like it's like a mini education in marketing. And on that, I do actually do some consultations. So there's some several steps we need to go through. So I'll tell you what, let's pretend I'm doing a marketing consultation. Say that you're a new coach, and I want you to pick something you're kind of involved in, and this is kind of how my brain process yep. so, so, so you've just So you've just qualified as a coach, have you? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, OK. So what is it that you actually do? Because I don't know much about coaching, really. What, what is it you actually, if somebody gave you money, what would happen? Okay, um, I would help, uh, let's say I'm a business coach. Right. So I would help other coaches, consultants, or trainers uh, grow their business. So I help them with sales and marketing as well. So you'd be helping me to help them grow their business. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, so Good let job. me make sure, so you help, okay, so you help other people make more money. And, let's and say... How, how, Let's say let's say I'm a I'm a health and wellness and fitness coach. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can say like okay. a yeah, health and wellness coach, and people give me money to help them uh, get in shape. Okay, okay. So basically, right? Okay. So like a personal trainer type of. Yeah, and I do like um, the coaching is in the mental side as well. So there's a oh, bit okay. of um, hypnotherapy maybe as well. Hypnotherapy. So I'm a um, I'm a trained hypnotherapist as well, Matt. So I um, that's what I used to do before becoming. All right. Okay. So first of all, what we have to clearly define is what you're providing, because most if I always say so, if you write down on a list, you know, in a sentence, what is it that you do? 
Mm. There's nothing worse than ambiguous titles and descriptions of businesses because it's just people's attention spans are tiny, so short, sorry. Uh, so you've got to really sort of explain what it is that you do in a clear and concise way. You also have to decide what it is that you stand for and what it is that you stand against. You actually create a dynamic of which your marketing will actually, I don't know if you can pick that up, <laughs> I'm doing hand gestures and <laughs> I'm being seen. Um, so you create a dynamic of who you are, who you stand for and, and what, kind of what your enemy is in a sense. So let's say it's health and wellness, okay well I want to know exactly, you really have to work out who your, your niche, who your target audience is and how they speak, how they communicate, what language they use, where they go, how they spend their time. Do they already spend money in this particular thing? So I'll, I'll just throw some some examples out on how you sort of identify what that makes sense. So let's say you're a health and wellness coach, okay, and let's say that you help, um, let's say that you help business people, okay, let's say you help businessmen get into shape, right, um, but they're business people. So I've got to start thinking, right, let's get into their kind of mind. So let's say that you might be working with guys who uh, are a certain age, like let's say they're sort of, let's say they're like 30, 30 plus. So they've got some money, they can afford to pay for your services. Because the worst thing is trying to sell something to people who don't want it, don't need it, or can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So you've got to think, well, people, where do they already spend this kind of money? And so you'd be thinking, right, well, they'll probably go to gyms, but they might not use their gym. They might not want to get a personal trainer at a gym, because having a personal trainer at a gym can be quite embarrassing. I know, I used to have them. So instead, I, could, I might do this personal training, but we might do it one-to-one -one out in the park, or we might do it out in, you know, just something else. So I have to think, what's a, a businessman of over 30, what kind of information would, would resonate with them, and how can I get them into a marketing funnel? So I would probably start with very simple things like business cards and flyers. And on this business card and flyer, it would be a very, basically have a picture of you, it would have a very kind of distinct title. Hello, sorry, I'm just broadcasting to the world. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> my flat, my, my, my flat mate, so. Um, sorry. So, <laughs> she says hello. Um, she says, show is ruined. It's ruined now. <laughs> the internet's broken. <laughs> so, <laughs> the internet's been deleted. And so, um, Eddie is watching. And so, um, oh, you can do stuff there. We are doing. You can feel free to do stuff. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and so let's say so businessman over 30, I pick a niche within that and I pick kind of a target they want to have. So it might be weight loss, it might be to actually you know to build up muscle. So it might be for city traders or people who work in the city who want to increase their muscle mass, lower their lower their body fat percentage by only having to do a 30 minute workout per week. Because these people want results fast, they want them quick, they want them, they don't mind kind of what money they pay because they want, you see what I mean? So they want these results fast, they want to see results kind of straight away, um, they want a professional service. So it might be, how do you improve your muscle mass? Do you, you know, do you work 10 hours a day? Do you work in the city? Do you want to increase your muscle mass and lower your body fat without having to go to the gym anymore, without having to go to the gym for, for any extra sessions? I tune this up a bit better, but you see the gist yeah. of what. So basically, download this free report now to learn how you can build muscle while sitting at your office chair. These two new techniques that have been recently developed helps you to build muscle and lower your fat just by doing these two new things that which you can do all day at work without anybody noticing. Download this free information report now at and then put like a, a QR code or a, a, a you know a, a, a link. So basically, people have come on, and it really speaks to them. They're office people, you know. They're you know, they're busy. So you actually make it adaptive for those kind of people, and they would then get this this report, and that might be like a PDF, just a few pages, and it's just some good information, stuff which they can do at work. You know, it might be clenches on those. I don't know, but it's just some stuff which they can actually do, and they will feel the benefit of. Now you will continue marketing to these people, and you will actually write articles that are directly aimed at this market. So when you put those out, yes, it will cause more people to get recognition, but if somebody who writes articles, or that's somebody who knows what it's on about. And also, you can guest post those on other blogs. Um, you can write your own blog. Um, and I, I, I just wanted to mention this new thing which I've been using, which is fantastic. It's something that's called Buffer. I don't know if you've heard of it. 
It's a Chrome extension called Buffer. I have, yeah. Yeah, basically I have Twitter, I don't use Twitter, but I do, let me through this. I have Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and something else, all, and you can set your uh, postings to go and you can time them and track, or, track everything from one place. It's really, really good. So it's called Buffer, I think it's called Buffer App. It's easy to find anyway. Mm. It looks like kind of three squares, like three tiles on top of each other. Uh, well, like a licorice all sort. That's what the, the icon looks like. <laughs> and it just means you can actually send all that out all at once. Because the thing is, when people say that somebody wants to lose weight and get into muscle, uh, get into muscle, get into fitness and build muscle, they will see this thing which resonates with them and they'll check it out. Although they might not be in a financial position or they might be going on holiday or they, you know, they're probably not going to buy from you straight away. They're going to buy for you from you in the follow up. Mm. And, um, what you want to be doing in this follow-up, you want to be sending out regular emails, you know, at least one a week, of specific content, of how to, you know, and also what you want to be including in there are testimonials from people. Now, testimonials, there's a whole thing around testimonials. I think video testimonials are the best. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a weight loss and muscle bulk thing, video pictures before and after are really what you want to be seeing. And also, you want testimonials from people who are relevant to the people relevant to buy them. So basically, it might be, this is Steve. He works in London office building. Da, da, da. He was this. And basically, I worked with him for five sessions, and this is what he achieved. And basically, he's a credible person. In fact, he should even be, obviously, if the testimonial E agrees to it, he should be sort of contactable to a degree, at least searchable, and have a real LinkedIn page, you know what I mean? You know, people probably won't, but they, they just want to see that it's just not been something that's been bought on fiber. Yeah. Because, you know, faking testimonials is easy. So you want to make sure it's a real testimony, even doing voice, like a testimony like this, actually. So what you want to be doing is providing, a, I, I think the 80 20 principle works really well. 80% 80, 80 of what you send out should be information and content, and 20% should be marketing. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually just. I'm in the middle of a book. Uh, it's actually, it's on my computer. Uh, Eighty twenty sales and marketing by Perry Marshall. Have you read that before? Uh, no, no. It's it's one of those things that I can read the title and I don't need to read the book. You know, oh, like, no, read the book. Read the book. <laughs> it's like, so good. It's like it's like kind of feel the fear and do it anyway. No. Oh right, I don't need to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's no, that's right. That's oh, oh, that one, dog. No, seriously, read it. Read the book. Eighty twenty sales and marketing by Perry Marshall. <laughs> okay, but is it generally? Yeah, is it generally serious. that eighty twenty? <laughs> it's, it's more than eighty twenty. Go read it. <laughs> but okay, I just want to touch on a few things that you mentioned. Yeah, okay, uh, please do. So, what I really liked what you said there, and this is what I do with my clients as well. After we find out, obviously what their service is, so whether it's health or wellness or their yeah. business approach or whatever it might be, um, to really find, to really get inside their, their target market's head and that's exactly yeah, what yeah. we went through. So to get very, very specific on um, who that is. So define, what, you, you mentioned like, you know, what's, what's their, in, their in, mail? In or? my, um, actually in my, uh, I'm sure I put it in, it must be, no it is, because I, I did this, uh, I did this marketing product, and actually this is part of what we do, there's an actual, uh, like a niche, not niche market, but who is your customer, it's like a whole thing, and basically it's like a profile, yep. and you literally go through and you fill that out. Yep. And the thing is, if you don't know who that is, you need to go out and do like literally feet on ground research. Um, you know, actually go and meet those people who are out there, and actually that—that's how you, you know your target market is basically you in a sense as well. Yeah. You know, so, people kind of forget this, so people are always going to buy off people who are, who are like themselves. Um, so your kind of target market you'll find is usually sort of you and sort of like five to ten years either side of your current age, depending on the product or service. Um, but basically, even things like you know your background, your education, uh, your social status, all those kinds of things, people, that's how, you know, that's how people are going to resonate with you. So, you should, so if, you're really, if you're really posh, you shouldn't be marketing your services to you know, really rich people. And I'm not saying that, no, that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean, that's the, just the, <laughs> but, but if you're really... That's what you want to do if you're posh, right? <laughs> that is true, that is true. <laughs> Maybe you need to change your, your, you know, 
put on a, a, a voice for that. But it's uh, you, but no, you actually want to be marketing to people with the language. It, it, there's nothing worse than when somebody really posh is trying to speak in sort of like a working class way. Yes, of course. Um, doesn't resonate. You know, doesn't resonate. No, and it's very it's very sort of false. So the thing is, market what you sell to who you know in a sense. So mm -hmm. so so really sort of you know so sell what you know to people who are like you. Um, you're the. I think as Steve Jobs goes, my market research is, do I like it? <laughs> I think that was my own. It's quite a good thing. You, in that way, you kind of set your own standards. But also, what you have to do as well is you've got to see what other people who are already providing what they're providing, and who buys from these people, who buys this service, what, who are they, what do they do, where do they go? You really, again, like what you said, you really got to get inside that person. And yeah. what? And another thing as well, you have to completely understand the platform that you're using. So, you, so a platform, for example, might be YouTube, it might be Facebook, it might be blog writing, it might be, in my case, Meetup, it might be um, on the streets, you know what I mean? You've got to really understand how the marketplace and actually how the platform works and learn how to dominate the platform properly. Yeah. Rather than, now, the same principles will work in each. Um, but making a video is very different to writing a blog post and the way that it's done and you know, doing the content. Um, so you've got to really kind of understand. So with Meetup, I've really researched how Meetup works. And I, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that I learned about Meetup and why certain groups work and why certain groups don't. And I applied that knowledge when starting my group three years ago. And it's grown to be the largest group of its kind um, in three years, we've got we're just under 7,000 members now. We do you know, about 10 events a month. We've done 128 consecutive sold out events at 75 people each, or up to 75 people each. We've all been sold out. And uh, yeah, we've got over 150 speakers waiting to speak. So, because we followed certain principles, and I really looked at how, at how the platform worked. So, so, if you're doing, just for an example of this, if you're doing a Google Ads, like pay per click, it's very different how you do them. If you're going for likes on Facebook, mm -hmm. it's very different to going for pay-per-click adverts. People are going on Google to find answers. People are on Facebook out of general interest. Mm -hmm. So it's just something worth keeping in mind. You can be much more direct sales-wise when you're doing a Google AdWord because people are looking for that specific thing. Yeah, it's about it's about uh, it's about focus, right? So being very focused and being very good at one. Thing one being very very good at one platform, absolutely and mastering it, and just because I think going back to people start coaches, consultants, or anyone starting a business, they want their their hand in all the different marketing avenues. Yeah, they want that's to do media. They want to do um, all the advertising. They want to do offline, and and it spreads them thin. So it's like um, coming back to what we're speaking about uh, having a niche. Um, if you don't have a niche, or if you don't um, market to that specific person. Then you really, if you try and market to everyone, then you're really marketing to no one. Absolutely, absolutely. It's yeah, it's the same with it, that approach. You, you spread yourself too thin, and you're just not. You just instead of being really great in one area, you're, med you're mm. maybe mediocre. Yeah, that's that would be good. Well, the, the, it's it's like you know, as a, as a hypnotherapist yourself, you'll know that when people qualify in hypnosis, they can do every service from A to Z. Literally, mm. you'll go on some hypnotherapist websites, and there'll be. No, no word of a lie. Over a hundred services they can do, um, they can't be good at a hundred things. No. You know, basically that means they've got a book of scripts with a hundred scripts. Yeah. Um, I do social anxiety, so I do. And uh, but I have people come from Scotland, Ireland, France, UK, you know, to work specifically with me because I do one particular thing. And I could charge a lot more for why I don't, but I could if I wanted because I specialise in something. So being a specialist in something. You've got to really know your subject inside out. Um, you can't just be, you know, you, you've got to go for it. You've got to be known for it. You've got to have the reputation for it. You've got to be the go-to person uh, for one particular thing. Do you know what? Just because I specialize in social anxiety, I still have people coming to me saying, well, I don't have that, but I have this, but do you do this as well? And so I do get, it seems like a, a catch-all in a sense, but mm. it really, and the thing is, it's like there's so many people trying to not offend people all the time. Now, I don't go out purposely trying to offend people, but I'm not, I'm not overly nice in a sense. I, I prefer to, you know, to basically be like Marmite, uh, people who just <laughs> love me or hate me, 
And the people, do you know what, the people who I kind of have long-running battles with are people who talk about energy and the law of attraction and all that kind of nonsense. But the thing is, if somebody has a blockage of energy and they need to get their chakras cleared, I'm not the person for them to work with anyway. Mm. You see what I mean? So if somebody, if somebody comes to me and goes, basically, I've got this issue, I can't get this particular memory out of my head, I have anxiety, I just want to deal with it, that's what I'm going to work with. Not somebody who has to, you know, unblock their chakras or something. They might have the same issue. Do you know what I mean? They might have the same issue, but one person will interpret it as, as something which needs to sort out you know, in, in, you know, their, in their psychology. Um, somebody else might interpret it as this more kind of, you know, spiritual thing. And I have no idea. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I really don't care if it does or doesn't, to be honest. I just don't have it. I just don't. I, I couldn't work with something like that because I would be lying. Well, that's it, that's what it's, it comes down to defining who you want to work with. Yeah. And what, um, what, one of my biggest aha moments when I was building out my business um, a couple of years ago is that sales um, is more of a disqualification process. So figuring out who you don't want, who isn't ideal for you. Mm. When you disqualify people from working with you and you're just left with those people standing in front of you that um, are right for your services, as you said at the beginning, you don't have to sell to them because you know that they want what you have. So this, it's all about disqualification and, and it starts with first getting very clear about who that ideal client is. And um, that's it's, what... w The way to get down to sort of who this ideal client is, is basically somebody who's already spending money on the service that you're providing. Mm. Okay, this is something which took me a long time to realize. Don't try and change people to get them to do something new. Find people who are already doing what it is you want them to do, and then basically you build yourself within their comfort zone. What I really liked um, going on that went finding people that that are already buying what what you have to sell. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that when you first start working with people or we're doing this this consult um, as part of your straightforward marketing system. Finding out what you stand for and mm. against. I thought that that is really cool. That was a bit of an uh, an aha moment for me. That's what I do with my clients. I just uh, reframe mm. it in a little bit different way. But um, finding out what you stand for and stand against. Yeah. So who you kind of? It's like the negative perception of your industry. So when I was uh, doing health and wellness and fitness. The negative perception in, in my industry was the fact that people, these these marketers in health and fitness, sold people what they wanted and not what they needed. Mm -hmm. And what they wanted is, you know, to look like Jennifer Anderson or Brad Pitt, to lose like 10 kilos in 10 days or get six-pack abs in a week. Mm -hmm. So really kind of, um, I didn't agree with that. So that's what I was standing against. So then where I'm leading for this is, is um, then you once you find out what you stand for and stand against, you uh, know how to then educate your market on why they should um, choose you over their competitors, mm. over your competitors. So again, um, finding who the people are that are already buying your product or service and then educating them on why uh, you are, are the right choice for them. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like the thing is, it's like I, I have a funnel system and when I'm selling like a high ticket um, item, uh, such as my services, because I, I, I don't do many uh, therapy sessions. I do less than 10 a month now. If I wanted, I could go back to doing therapy full time. I could book myself out 10 a week if I wanted. Um, but I choose not to, because I'm doing, I run interesting talks. You know, I run up to 10 events a month, and I run workshops. I train therapists, and you know, also I'm doing a lot of internet marketing and uh, producing products as well. So I don't really have the time. Um, Oh, I was gonna, what the actual, uh, I did, I, it will come back to me. It's out there. It will come back. <laughs> uh, I went off on a slight tangent. I will find it. I'll bring it back in. So I'll just backtrack. Uh, so it was going to, so uh, doing therapy. Oh, you've got to have a funnel. Uh, there we go. Yes. Basically, oh. with, with the funnel, the end part of that funnel for me is having a Skype chat with that client. Yep. So the way that I would sort of. I don't know uh, what who who's listening to this. And I, and I'll, you know, I keep saying funnel, and some people are like, I don't quite understand. A funnel 
is, let's say, a marketing system, and it's literally like a funnel. So basically, at the top, the, you put in kind of qualified leads, and it kind of comes down, and at the bottom, you get out a certain amount of paying clients. Now, a lot of people... A lot of people's funnels are kind of like that because that's like spending a lot on advertising and marketing. You know, you need to get that's like getting as many clicks as you possibly can without them being right for what you're actually selling. Um, yep. you, you want your funnel to basically be as steep as possible, so it's almost like a tube as opposed to a funnel. So the people you're putting in there are basically are very likely to be um, a client. So. Like, yeah. Yeah, so with so with with uh, with my funnel for um, doing therapy sessions, for example, they will uh, contact me because they will have read a blog post. Usually, I haven't read, I haven't written a blog in a long time, but people still find me through the blog posts. Um, they will have seen a, a YouTube video. I don't actually have my website online anymore. I haven't had it online for a while, but people usually find out about me, and they will send me an email because so I don't put my phone number anywhere because I don't want people to call me, which might sound stupid, but it's like if you start putting your phone number online, you're going to start, if it's your personal number, you're going to start getting a lot of phone calls, and I don't want people to phone me. I want people to send me an email. So people send me an email, and I will actually have a, a PDF which I actually send out to them. Now, their email, which they send to me, might be pages long, which I won't read. I will simply send an email back, and thank you so much for contacting me in regards to this. Um, here's the PDF. Please fill this out and return it to me. And that's it. That's my whole thing which I do. It's then up to them to be able to follow the the, um, the instructions in the PDF. If people can't follow instructions, I can't work with them. I know that sounds really awful, but I've been in business for a long time, and if people cannot follow simple step-by-step -step instructions, I can't work with them. So I send them the I send them a PDF, and in there it explains exactly who I am, what I do, all these links to testimonials, resources, you know, all these. And also, I also put that, I'm going to put this into an autoresponder anyway, but I also then obviously take their email and put them into my system manually. Um, it usually takes, a, it takes up to a year between somebody contacting me and me doing sessions with them. Just to give you an idea, it can sometimes take up to a year. Mm. Um, when I used to work at a thing called PUA training, I used to work as a dating coach for a number of years. It would often take two years from initially getting in contact and doing a boot camp or a residential. So that is why continual marketing by a systemized way, such as an autoresponder and a broadcast on a, from an autoresponder, is absolutely key. Um, pe most people are not going to buy from you straight away. It will take a long time. But if you're patient, it will pay dividends over time. Yeah. So I will have people contact me. I send out an email. And basically, the next step from them is they then fill out a, uh, their information in a way which I asked them to fill it out. They then send it back to me as an email. In that email, it says times that they're available for a Skype consultation, which is a 30-minute consultation, if I believe I can help them. So I'll read through their information. I'll then contact them, and I'll say, right, we're going to Skype at this time. I'll then add them on Skype. And then when I have them on Skype, I have my calendar open, my booking system, and... Uh, their notes, and I simply read through their notes, and I'll. And by this time, they've listened to all my testimonials. They've done, you know, they've gone through my marketing, and so basically, I'll be like, okay. Well, I've looked through your stuff. I think I might be able to help you. Let's talk about it, and then if, at the end, if we both feel like we should, um, we can book in two sessions. I always book in two sessions with clients, a week or so apart. I only see clients for three sessions maximum, so I book in two sessions a week or so apart because you're trying to because. I need a week for my stuff to develop and do something called IEMT, which is a very deep-rooted thing. And it takes a week for that, a week to 10 days. Now, if I book in the first session, then trying to get that second one in a week, I, I, it's just running around doing crazy stuff. So I book two sessions in a week after, like, let's say seven to 10 days after, and I book it in there and then whilst I'm on the phone with them. I then send them the confirmation. So it's actually kind of quite a short funnel. It goes from email, me sending a PDF, them sending the information back, me booking a Skype session, us speaking on Skype, me booking things in. Mm -hmm. And I think from getting people onto a Skype session, I think I genuinely don't know the last time somebody, the last time I got someone to a Skype session and I didn't book them in. Um, I, I just, I, I literally do not remember the last time it happened. Unless it was my choice, where I've actually recommended them to go for a different form of counselling or something, mm. uh, but it's not been to the point where because they didn't want to come and book me. Um, 
and so so yeah so that is so what you have to do as a new business you've got to work out what is your sales funnel because if you don't have one you are screwed from the beginning <laughs> you are absolutely screwed from the beginning so you've yeah. got to work out a sales system and this is what I did in this straightforward marketing system I actually just showed what all these systems look like in reality and how I've done them in my own business and basically how you would apply this in your business as well and I do this with uh, you know that so that's my um, that's my funnel but then you also want to be thinking about testimonials referrals joint ventures um, you want to be thinking about all these from the beginning because with testimonials a testimonial is just somebody basically giving you a review really um, now there's different ways of taking it there's different ways of doing it and if, unless you put it into a system you're not going to get many. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure you have a reliable system in which you do your testimonials, in which you have them. Even if that just means asking at the, you know, you, you always do it after you've just sold somebody something. You say, please, can I have a testimonial? And the best thing to do is say what you want to be included in the testimonial. Yeah, I agree. Yep. So, so if not, great job, get, thanks, Steve. Get them when it's uh, get them when they're on that emotional high as well. Like after a really good session is a good time to do it as well. It is. You know, I actually do my uh, testimonials on. Uh, I do them on YouTube. I actually film. Uh, a, well, I record a, a Skype recording of a, of a conversation with my clients, and it's usually three months afterwards. Now, the reason why I do it like this is because most hypnotherapists. Don't follow up with their clients in case what they've done hasn't worked. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And I, you know, I, I actually, you know, talk about this because any hypnotherapist can make a client feel good. Yes. By the end of the session, right? Yeah. I have no intention of making my clients feel good in the session. Uh, I'm, and I make this very clear that you know you, you're probably going to feel like crap by the end. And for two days, you're probably going to feel a bit, you know, crazy. Um, but I do say that you are. It's not going to be pleasant coming to see me. It's not a. Ple it's not a luxury thing. It's not like going for a massage or something. You know, it's actually coming to do actual work. You know, actual mental work. No, no happy. Yeah. No happy ending for this session. No happy ending. <laughs> but I. That's why I do the testimonial three months after. Because the biggest thing that people will say is like. Well, all right, you know, you're, you can do this. How long will it last? And you know, obviously, you can't ever say it. You don't know because you'd be lying if you did. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people do give goals and guarantees, which is not a guarantee, but a goal or a, an outcome, which I just find weird because um, you can't because you can't guarantee what's going to happen in life, you know. So I will say, you know, I'll do the best I can, but I can't guarantee an outcome. Um, I can tell you what outcomes there might be, but we just don't know. Yeah. But doing a doing a testimonial three months after is a good chunk of time for people to go and change, develop, live their lives, for those changes to really kind of settle in and balance. And it allows them to people then to really look back at the sessions with a real sort of analytical perspective of what it was like to go through them. And to be perfectly honest, as soon as I send people to those testimonials, as soon as they've listened to them, that they are in they are ready to and it answers all the questions as well. Hmm. So, you know, all the questions, because the questions I actually ask people to answer um, is how did you hear about me? Why was it you were actually seeking the, the help? Um, what you thought about the process and working with me? And what have your results been like since? So it's just based around four questions. Mm. So if people are listening at home, <laughs> so I'll take that back. If people are listening, <laughs> um, I want to think about what are the questions that you get asked the most all the time? What are your frequently asked questions? And include those in the testimonials that you're doing. Mm. So actually answer, get those questions answered in the testimonials. I got I have a question actually from a from a viewer at home. <laughs> Um, around testimonials uh, from uh, James Quinn. Um, Hi, James. <laughs> Hello, James. <laughs> he, he writes, one question I have uh, regarding testimonials. I've had yeah. a very hit and miss result in getting clients to do testimonial interviews, yeah. mm -hmm. even after successful work done. I know yeah. how you feel, James. Um, a lot of them seem either to be too busy or difficult to get hold of. So yep. how specifically would you recommend getting previous clients to do testimonial interviews? I'll, okay. I'll let you go first. Okay, that's, that's a very, very good question. Now, I, I know James. James is a therapist like myself. In fact, he does the same kind of therapy as myself. 
There are different ways to do this. You've got to make sure that by somebody giving you a testimonial, they benefit in some way. So you could offer them a free session or something, you know what I mean, in exchange for the testimonial and feedback. When you're doing, I will answer James' question and say, well, when you're, say you're selling a product, you ask for the testimonial face-to-face -face there mm -hmm. and then, right? That's when you do it. My sister's an artist, and she, she does uh, mosaics. She trains people how to make mosaics, right? So what will happen is they will actually do, I'll show you, I've got one here. I didn't make this. I have no artistic skill at all. So this is like a mosaic that she's done. It's an oh, album. cool. So it's a John Lennon album, right? Yeah, that's so right. What, so what she does, she will actually have the person who's made the mosaic, and she will have them literally sat next to them and talking about, basically, I've made this. And she will actually do like a case study. So she's got pictures of them doing it all the way through the stages. Now, she, I've, I've been sort of trying to train her on how to do these. So a lot of people go, well, Mosaic, well I, have no, um, I have no artistic skill. How long is it going to take me? How much is it going to cost? And she makes sure that those questions are answered in the testimonial she takes. Mm. And when they finish, then they've looked at it and they're so happy and proud about it. Now, as a therapist, it's a little bit different because the thing is, Nobody really wants to talk about the fact that they've been to therapy. It's like a secret thing. Yep. So some things that I recommend that you can do is that you actually start off by having one online. By actually, I, when I first started, I used to do a lot of therapy sessions for free in return for testimonials. So I would actually do the actual session free of charge with the... Um, with the knowing that they're going to provide a testimonial for me. Um, so that's what I would do, is I'd actually get some ones already done. I would then show those testimonials to the people you want testimonials from and say, do you know what, would be really good. I would really like to do a testimonial like this. Now, if you think the work we've done together is good, um, I also think it's kind of up to... It's kind of... the the client's kind of responsibility in a way that if they like what you do it's kind of their responsibility to actually tell other people as well and that's how I frame it because a lot of people who I work with they've been in therapy for years and I'm, I'm their last resort many times okay mm -hmm. so if I've done something with somebody uh, as like a really great session or a couple of sessions and they've experienced life-changing results I actually think they've got a bit of a duty to do some feedback with you so that other people who were in their situation can also benefit. Yes. Um, so I, I would, the thing is, most people are really busy, and you've got to sort of understand that. So that's why I would email somebody directly, and I will always say I do testimonials, and this is how I get new clients and new business. And also, a lot of my clients, in fact, the vast majority of them, have been through a testimonial of some form to get to me, or you know, as part of my funnel. So they know that testimonials is a big part of my business. Um, the thing of just not asking is the biggest problem. Yep. And, but the, the thing is, if you say, oh, when you're free, I'd really like you to do a testimonial, nobody likes that because they're like, oh, how long is it going to be? What you want to say is, when you're free, I would like 10 minutes of your time. I would like to ask you these four questions. And it's going to take 10 minutes and no more. We can do it on Skype. Please let me know your available time and we'll work something in. Do you know what I mean? So if you can be precise with how long it's going to take, how much effort it's going to take, what you precisely want from them, and how they will benefit as well. So you can even offer to get them something, you know, whatever is relevant to your... You know, if you are... Say you are a hypnotherapist. Say you might have a, uh, a depression or anxiety download or product or something. You could give that to them in return for doing the testimonial. It's not going to cost you anything, you know. Yeah. Digital stuff's free, essentially, isn't it? So, but also, I tell people when I'm working with them, I, I, I let them know that, you know, it, are you happy to, to do a testimonial? And you've got to think, well, why wouldn't somebody want to do one? One's usually busy in time, absolutely. The second thing is the embarrassment. So you have to make sure that they won't be embarrassed, so you have to make... So when I, some of the testimonies I've done on the my YouTube site, I, I really recommend people... I mean, we'll put links or something. It's just they're interesting to listen to. Um, it's RWH Matt Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L-L, -L, is the YouTube channel, RWH Matt, I think. 
Mac, just Google Matt Kendall, you'll find me somewhere. Uh, I do hypnosis, I do, I do exist. Uh, I just don't have a website at the moment. And, um, uh, yeah, there's a really good point in there. It will come back to me, it will come back to me. But basically, yeah, just make sure that you do them. Those are, oh, I missed out on the points I advertise my YouTube channel, which I don't even know. <laughs> But make sure you take them. Oh, on yeah. anonymity. So basically, some of the people, I've changed some of their names and circumstances for dramatic effect. Yeah. Uh, not for dramatic effect at all. Basically, for to, so people don't know who they are. But we obviously yeah. talk about this in advance. And so the, the actual thing around, and then that means they can actually get into it. Plus, I never really talk about things that are too personal. And I never push them. I, you know, I kind of allow them to speak as much as they want on the subject uh, Without, I'm not going to pro. Even in my sessions, I don't go into much content, so I don't even know much about it. It's more to do with the process of kind of going through it and the results they've gotten, rather than what's the problem. Yeah, and to to add on what you're saying there, Matt, and to kind of uh, answer your question as as well, James. Like what I've found with going back to previous clients and getting trying to get testimonials off them, it's really really hard if they. If you're going back to old clients that you've mm. that you worked with like six months ago, it's it's extremely hard. As you said, they're busy. Um, it usually they they feel uh, when people don't know how to do video testimonials, but they don't know how to record themselves, and they've never done it before. There's that overwhelm and fear, yeah. and they just don't want to do it. So they start making up excuses, and I've had that time and time again. So um, going on what you said there, Matt. To answer James's question, a, a really powerful thing is just to let them know, to pre-frame it before they even start working with you, let them know that all of your clients um, do video testimonials, Yeah, um, every single one. So if, if you enjoy um, working together, if we get good results, then I expect that um, you know we're going to do a video testimonial together and you can let them know that as well. And a really good, great technique that you mentioned there, Matt, is to do like a free session for a video testimonial. That's really cool. good. Um, the uh, one last thing that I want to mention is removing the hurdles for your clients to do the video testimonial for you. So what I what I do is I'll send them an email with step by step instructions how to do a video testimonial either using QuickTime or just straight to YouTube. And it's you know if you don't have a Google account, this is how you sign up. And I and I made them a little video. Then the next next step is to log into YouTube, then the next step is this, the next step is that. So remove the hurdles and make it easy for them to do the video testimonial for you. So I get a lot of pushback because people are not um, are not very technologically minded. With some of my clients, uh, some of the older clients that aren't technologically minded, uh, it's just, um, make, just make it easy for them is what I'm well, saying. Well, you know what? People say, you know, I don't have a camera, right? That's an iPhone. Yeah. There you go. That's your mobile exactly. studio. There's no excuse not to do them. Um, I've, I make little snippet videos. So I'm just moving around. Um, I make like little videos and stuff on my, my iPhone. If your client's got an iPhone or a Samsung, the other HTC, that's the main one I think. I don't know. Um, they can do it on that and email it to you. They can actually yeah. upload it to you. You know what I mean? So the, exactly. it, if you have a, a bad quality, crappy, done on a mobile testimonial, that's much better than not having one. Right. You don't want things that are done in a studio. You don't want things. You want kind of real answers from people who, again, who people resonate from as well. So your your testimonials have to be directed at the correct people who are coming into your yes. funnel as well. Yeah, exactly. People think you need these perfect testimonials done in a studio. No, that no, actually, no. I, think, I think, works against you. Yeah, it I think it does. Like it's um, all contrived. Like just do it in the moment with your, with your iPhone or whatever it is. And they're the better ones. That's when you're going to get people like that that emo on their emotional high, and you're going to create a much better connection with your prospective clients. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, Matt, I wanted to um, before we wrap up here. I know that you have um, wrap up. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> wrap up. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I'll go. <laughs> Just waking up. <laughs> well, I said okay. So. Yeah, come back. <laughs> Um, Ask me a few more so questions put, first, then I'll go for another one. I wanted to, I wanted to thank you because you actually put a um, a web page together yes, for the viewers of the Elite Entrepreneur Show. I really want to uh, thank you for that. Can you tell uh, us and the and the people watching at home 
<laughs> and the people watching at home, um, a little bit about the the straightforward the the link that you've that you've set up. Yeah. For us. Okay. So basically, what I want people to understand is that I'm not a marketer. Uh, I'm not a, a marketing guru. I I don't. Oh, excellent. Uh, I I don't really have any desire to sell you any marketing products. Saying that, I've made a marketing product. Now the reason why I hire. <laughs> Now the reason why I kind of made this, it was kind of cost. It was like the hacienda in Manchester. It had to be built. Do you know what I mean? So basically, the straightforward marketing system. I made it so I wouldn't have to. No, so I wouldn't have to make it. Doesn't make any sense. But I, I kind of made it to kind of get it out of the way. A lot of yep. people were asking me for it. A lot of people were asking if I was going to do a marketing product. So what I decided to do is that in in, uh, in London I used to do this one day event and basically it was a, a four hour event of me going through. There's different stages actually. There's the kind of the preparation stage and that's how to take your idea and formulate it. Like what we were talking about earlier, who you are, who do you stand against. But there's actual exercise to go through. Um, I also talk about sort of time management and how to put different tasks into different times. Uh, basically, to make yourself effective, and then I think there's seven or eight. I can't quite remember. It's, it's in the sales copy. There's eight different marketing systems. Now, these marketing systems I use myself. I use in my previous companies, and I help people when I do the consultations. Um, I help them to show them how these actually work. Now, this isn't stuff which I've just thought about and think it might work. This is stuff which works, and I show you exactly how I do it in my companies. And I don't mean in straightforward marketing, I mean in interesting talks, I mean in, as a hypnotherapist, actually in real companies. Right. I don't really like marketing companies as a whole, to be honest. And I don't like marketing companies that don't have much work. Cause what does that mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, surely, if you're a marketing company, you should be the busiest companies in the world. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> um, so you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't trust a chef who, who's starving, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, uh, so, so so I have no desire to be a marketing guru. I, I, I'm not a marketing guru. I'm just somebody who's run small businesses successfully for about 10 years. And every, this marketing product is kind of designed for people who don't really like or want to do marketing. But unfortunately, you have to do it. So it's really broken down into lots of short videos. And each video, uh, the first bits are a bit more theory, but every other video is a training video, and they're only like they're only about sort of ten minutes long. We're not talking like massive investments. I don't use many marketing terms because I don't know that many, to be perfectly honest. Um, I don't help set up massive elaborate. You have to make a product or service and exchange that for money to somebody. You know what I mean? I keep it that simple. So if you're looking for like investment or you're, I, this is probably not the product for you. If you're going self-employed, if you're setting up a small business, to be perfectly honest, if you're already running a business but want to look at improving your marketing, the actual marketing system, look, even if you pick just a couple of things, like how to do the testimonials properly, how to do referral systems properly, how to do joint ventures, how to do networking. I show you exactly how to do networking before the event, during events, after the event. Um, so what we've done is we've actually filmed all of this content, direct to camera, and real nice HD quality camera. So I've been told I don't know what HD is, to be honest. <laughs> it's just clear. And so we filmed all of that. And that's about sort of two hours of content, all of the different systems. We then actually have the um, the live workshop which we recorded, and that so that's about three hours ish, you know, after we take after it's been edited, and it's just a one-off price. So basically, people can have that for uh, you know you know forever access. To get to it, I've actually made you uh, the like I said, I, I found this again recently. These are my right. seven steps. Yeah, yeah these are my uh, I've actually got my my seven uh, essential resources for all new businesses. Now, when you're starting a new business, you need to have certain resources in place to do things like the research. Now, some of these are books, some of these are websites, some you may have heard of, some you'll have never have heard of, I guarantee it, and they're really, really, really good. It's like I can show you where to get hours and hours and hours of high-quality marketing and copywriting uh, webinars and MP3s free to download. I'm listening. Have been free, always will be free. 
All you need to do is go to straightforwardmarketingsystem.com forward slash elite. Put your name and email in, and I'll send you an email straight away with the PDF. And it's just seven resources. And I think everything in there is free, or it's a book. So, you know, it's not much money at all. Yeah. And um, so whenever I start a business project, um, which I seem to be doing every week at the moment, I, these are the resources which I use. Uh, there's no affiliates. There's no thing. I don't make any money from any of the resources. It's just seven things which I use. And some of them you might be a little bit surprised by, by what they actually are. Um, so, so if you get that, then basically when you click on that, it will take you to all the information about the straightforward marketing system. Um, and if you if you want it, you know the thing is, if you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. I'm not going to mess around with it. Come on in, that's cool. <laughs> this is my flatmate. And so basically, it's got, I think it's like a 30 day guarantee. So basically, take it, try it out, watch the videos. If you want a refund, I'll give you a refund. I'm not. I, I didn't. I really didn't make this product for the money. To be perfectly honest, I made it because I wanted to get all of this out in one place where I could make it accessible to people. Yeah. It was never really about making. I, I make much, much more of the other projects I do. This was kind of like a little side thing. Um, I don't know how long we'll run it for. It'll always be online. So if you pay, pay for access, it'll always be there at least for five years. So um, and I'll keep adding to it because I actually do webinars. I've got about nine or ten hours of content of webinars that I'll be adding to that as well over time. So, and that just shows you how to run a business. And the thing is, if you can't get your own business up and running within a month and making money, let me know. Now, I'll either help you, um, I'll give you like a free consultation. I've got no other marketing products to sell you, by the way, so it's not like a, you're now into a coaching program. I don't have one. Funnel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, there is none. <laughs> there really isn't. So yeah. I'll just give you some of my time if you need it. Or I'll give you a refund or, or both, to be perfectly honest. So the thing is, I just don't, I, you know, when I first started, or not when I first started, but during, like, I think it was my fourth and fifth year in business, I worked in a, um, uh, it's called a networking hub. It's like a, a co-working space type. You, you know what I mean? Like a big open plan office. And when I started working there, there was 80 small businesses, and there are three that remain, uh, and I own two of them. Um, so... I understand what it's like starting a small business, and, and it, it, when it goes wrong, it, it's not you know it's not very good. But the thing is, I also believe that making money and setting up a business is actually quite a straightforward process. Yet we complicate it. Yeah. I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying this is a make money overnight product. It's it's, it's not. You you know the thing is, it's like people say to me, "What's the secret behind um, interesting talks being so successful?" And I'll say, well, it's easy. It's just uh, consistent hard work and effort for three years. Um, there's no, I'm sorry, there's no kind of headline, there's no gimmick, there's no plug-in, there's no app that to, sort of replaces that um, hard work. So the thing is, running a business is hard work, you know, setting up a business. If this sort of, I make $240 from home by doing five minutes, you know, if that works, there wouldn't be adverts for it, would there, you know? So they'd just be doing it. So the thing is, this is kind of like a bit of an old-fashioned approach towards marketing. It's about how to build a, ro a robust system that works, that generates results, and doesn't really cost any. Like a lot of the marketing things I talk about don't really cost anything. You know, a lot of new businesses, when they start off, they will throw a load of money at their advertising. And it's just the worst possible thing to do. And I go through the system why that is a bad, basically, you know, I don't know what you can see here, but if you throw loads of money, it will go you will come straight back down because you don't have the systems in place to deal with it. Yeah. So I help people build up businesses like one small step at a time. Um, basically, you're creating solid foundations yeah. in which this business operates. And I, I go through. I do mention about. So I do talk about social media. I do talk about it a little bit. The things I haven't done too much on it because it changes so so much. So. Um, I might do some webinars and stuff like that. In fact, I've actually got a tech guy who, who might be listening. He's out filming tonight. He, he knows all about digital marketing. I know about how to create copy, but I'll send him the stuff. And then, like, that website, that web page, I don't know how to do that. He, he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got no idea. Um, but people can go to straightforwardmarketingsystem.com forward slash elite oh. and just put your name and email in there. Uh, we might send you some emails. It'll all be good stuff. We don't give it away to other people. Um, and you can unsubscribe at any time. But I usually send out some pretty good information, actually, some pretty good resources. And again, it's like, whether you decide to buy it or not, I, it really doesn't matter, but 
I guarantee that if you are starting a business and you kind of feel a bit overwhelmed, this just gets rid of all the rubbish and all the noise and it's kind of really what you have to know. And um, it's kind of almost like the minimum requirement, I suppose. You know what I mean? Mm. It's kind of, this is what you have to know to run a business. There's no fancy, elaborate systems. There's no over-technical things. Um, if I can do this, you know, it can't be that difficult to work with others. So if you are going self-employed or starting a business, go through. And again, at least give it a go. And if you don't like it, drop us an email and we'll refund you. Actually, no problem at all. You know, I don't want Thanks. your money if you don't like the product. You know, And I made it 47 quid. I, we, know, we had conversations with people, and people were trying to get them to sell it for 297 or, or for, And I was just like, this is another little thing. I won't go into lecture mode too much, because I know you're probably wanting to go now. And so, so when you make things accessible, I don't like this raise your prices kind of attitude, right? Make what you do accessible. Now that doesn't mean you have to work with everybody, you can still turn clients away, but make what you do actually affordable. Because when you start charging much more money for stuff, and if you start to make much more money, which is kind of above your staging, you tend to get a bit arrogant, and you forget to do the daily things that need to be done. Do you know what I mean? So when people start, if you kind of raise your prices, that more than you should be charging, really, because you can, because you've done your marketing well, and you start to make a lot of money for doing the same job, weirdly, you don't tend to do that job as well, which sounds really odd. I know it sounds really odd, but it's what I found has happened. So with interesting talks, right, interesting talks, I charge six pounds. I always have, I used to charge a five, it's gone by a quid, the economy. And so it's gone by a quid like last year. Um, I could charge, I could I could easily charge a tenner for, easily charge a tenner for, and I could have done for a long time. Now, if I charge a tenner for it, it actually makes it a slightly different product to what it is now. Six pounds is like, that's a gamble, that, that's worth a punt, you know what I mean? Mm. As soon as you start charging a tenner, well, that's sort of the same price as the cinema now. So, you know what I mean? So we're starting to get into something else slightly different. So by keeping it six quid, I've made it accessible, and I'd also prefer to sell to sell out at 75 people every time. Again, you can check it at Interesting Talks London, uh, meetup.com, so that's interesting hyphen talks hyphen London. Just check, check it, it's all there. Um, I prefer to have 75 people paying six quid than 40 people paying a tenner. Hmm. Because also, if I was having 75 people paying a tenner, suddenly I'm earning a lot more money for actually doing the same job. I will tend to get complacent. Now, this is just me. If I'm making twice as much money, nearly, doing the same thing, I'm probably going to start spending that money on stupid stuff. I'm probably <laughs> going <laughs> to... I am, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm probably going to start... So are, we, are, we talking, are we talking about just you now, or is this like... <laughs> well, this is, I think this happens with a lot of people. When people start to earn a lot of money, and they can't control it, and it might just be my insecurity about dealing with large sums of money. No, it's not. I, <laughs> I, I earn all right, trust me. Um, but the thing is, if you start... Why is my point here? I'm sure there is something of value, but I, we'll find it in the end. Um, the thing is, if you start earning a lot more money for doing the same thing, you will get above your station and you'll stop doing the daily things that make that thing work before, as it did. So, for example, with every interesting talks, there's a certain sequence of emails, there's a certain way I run the event, there's a certain amount of photos that we take. Everything works to an absolute turnkey system, and that's what allows us to put on, I want to say us, me, because I run the whole thing, up to 10 events per month, because I've created an absolute solid system. If I start making more money, I will probably forget to do or just get complacent because I'll get a bit I am type, you know what I mean? I'll kind of forget to do the little bits and it will slow, well, it will actually sort of break apart quite quickly. Hmm. What's the message here? But so basically my whole thing here is this is why we've made the whole the straightforward marketing thing 47 quid. <laughs> I didn't want to make too much money off it, which I know sounds really odd. Ah, okay. I would it comes prefer... full circle now. It comes full circle. I know exactly. It always does. I always know where I am. I just don't know where I did. I always get back. We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. Um, and so, for example, like I do a whole weekend therapy training course, right? 
I charge 197 quid for it for a weekend training course. I'm not trying to sell it, but because I want people to learn that therapy, people learning that therapy and me making a decent living is more important than me making as much money as I can. Mm. Now, the thing is, if you have this whole everybody benefits attitude, right, and how can you get as much as many other people to benefit from what you're doing as possible, the, the world kind of turns round and it starts to I'll give you stuff because I don't want to sound too spiritual and more attraction y. But most people, all right, uh, can, I, can I go on like a two minute rant? I know, I know you're sort of dying to sort of cut this off and like edit right. it out. All right, okay, okay. So most people get into business for very selfish reasons. They want to do something, they feel they're entitled to get paid for doing something, um, and they want to make a lot of money. Right? It's very selfish. I always start off by thinking about the people who I'm serving first. So when I first got into business, I used to um, work with bands. So I was thinking, how can I serve them best first? What do they want? And I actually spent a lot of time speaking with bands and working out what they wanted and needed. I then started speaking to venues and worked out what they wanted and needed. And then I started speaking to people who come to events and worked out what they wanted and needed. So I created something where those three parties all benefited greatly. So I knew the bands wanted to play at an organized type event. But also the sound guys as well, I found out what they need. So you work out, everyone who you're getting involved, what, how everybody benefits. Because it's the small things, it's the detail, the devil is in the detail, right? So when I was running band nights, I spoke to the bands now. They wanted to play to a lot of people. They wanted to get their, 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 their songs heard. Um, they wanted a recording, if possible, of the live gig. Um, this was back in like you know, 2001, 2002, before the mobile revolution. Um, we then they wanted uh, yeah an organised gig which they were going to play. There's going to be lots of people, a decent sound system, um, and uh, some drinks, you know, and to make money as well to actually make some money because most bands have to pay to play, which I did bring in, but I'll tell you about it. Um, and they don't make any money or anything with that. Hey, like, it's just like the flat main. It's just uh, <laughs> so. Um, so what, so what I did is I then worked out the venue. The venue said, well, we need a certain amount of people to make it you know, profitable for us to actually run you know, the night. We're going to put on this amount of staff. So what we need is we need you to be reliable. We need you to bring this amount of people. We need... So it's like, great. So you start to actually work all this stuff out. I then spoke to the sound engineers, and they say, well, what we need is we need the bands to be here at this time. We need to be... We need this kind of information in advance from the bands. So I created a band technical spec sheet, which I sent to the bands, which they had to reply with, with all their technical specs, which was given to the sound guys um, like two or three days in advance. And that made their job infinitely easier. You know, I said that no other promoter has ever done that, and it just meant they now do it as standard with the people, and something which I brought in. Uh, and the people who came along, they want to obviously see their friends in bands, but they also like free stuff. So what I did is I actually contacted cinemas, bowling things, bowling alleys, and lots of different things. There was like also, you know, um, a lot of people came to see as students, and we used to get hundreds of free tickets for things. So basically, we used to charge people that in the back, we used to sell the bands a hundred pounds of the tickets, but well, hundred, well, three hundred pounds of the tickets were a hundred pounds. They would then resell them for you know three hundred pounds basically. We used to have three bands on every night, which meant that every night was busy because all the bands now have a financial investment, but they've all made money out of it. They get a recording, because we used to record everything on a mini disc and <laughs> mini disc. Uh, we used to record them on a mini disc this is to show my age. And that would then be given to people at the end, um, on the night. So the bands absolutely love that, you know. So and it cost me a pound to do that. You know, I had to buy a mini disc to put in the desk, but it cost me a pound. You wouldn't believe how much work that actually got me. You know what I mean? It's all in the details. Um, and then, so people used to pay three quid for a ticket to come in, which was bought in advance. Always take money in advance for everything you do. Always take money in advance for everything. Um, never rely. People go, oh yeah, I'll buy it off you. No, they they buy it now. They're not, you know what I mean? It's not going to happen like that. So always take money in advance. Uh, so people would buy a ticket for three pounds to come to an event. It'd be busy, or there'd also be drink offers on as well. We worked out all the drink offers, all these kinds of things. Um, and then basically, people would uh, get a cinema ticket, a bowling ticket, and a ticket to something else. And they were worth about sixteen quid. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Now, the people who gave us the tickets benefited because they were now reaching a new audience for not doing anything. So everybody benefits from this. Now, when everybody benefits from working with you, a lot of people want to work with you. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the way it works. So you have to work out when you're running something, it's a project because you're going to bring in the skills and resources of other people at some point um, and also your customers and clients and the people that you're going to work Most businesses are usually like a collection of other businesses that you've brought together. Yeah, Usually that's kind of yeah. how it works. So you have to you have to have like your procurement list in a sense, and you've got to develop a relationship and make it as easy as possible for people to work with you. Now, I would work with some people, right? Like say I would like it's a venue. I would be very, very easy to work with, very professional, very easy to contact. I'd contact I'd keep them in the loop. I was genuinely interested how much money they would take from the bars. I would always ask and I'd make sure I'd ask. Now they would make a certain amount of money with me. Now they might put on another band night with a promoter who's really distant and arrogant and just stupid and now they might make more money with him, right? Okay. But they are more likely to do long term work with me where they know they're going to get X right. amount of pounds per night rather than it being because that other guy might put on another night where there might be seven people where they might lose a lot of money. What you want to do is be very, very competent and consistent in what you deliver. When you get competency and consistency and everybody who's involved with you benefits, that's when things start to really turn around. So you have to think, what does my business, what does my service, how does it help people? And how does it help others? And how can I put together something where you benefit, you have a slice of that pie, but this pie is now brilliant. You don't have the whole of something rubbish which is selfish. Mm. You've got a slice of something that's really, really good and that other people are interested in as well. And this is how you get people to work with you. And this is how you, you get a, um, referrals and this is how you get, you know, this is how you begin to create your reputation. Um, you know, you've got to make sure it's your job as the business owner to make sure everybody's happy and everybody's satisfied. So that's why you've got to be careful about who you work with and what you're promising. Very true. Very true. To, and this is why you've got to, you've got to, like just recently, um, I, you know, you've got to set your own standards and you've got to make sure you stick by them. I actually did a talk myself a couple of weeks ago at Interesting Talks. And it wasn't my best. I didn't. I actually did this, and you know, I thought I didn't deliver like I could have done. It was actually the wrong kind of topic. There was actually a few things that were wrong with it, but the overall kind of um, goal here, the overall message, is that it wasn't my my own standard. It for six quid, it was great. You know what I mean? But for my personal standard and what I deliver and what I usually deliver and um, what the other speakers deliver. It wasn't up to my standard. So what I did is I made myself accountable because a lot of people are there to take the credit when things go well and then shift blame when things don't. So I actually st I sent out an email to these 7,000 people. Just so oh, I sent out an email to the people who attended first and I said, basically the talk which I did last week wasn't up to the standard. I would like to offer you a free ticket to um, any upcoming event of your choice. Um, and I had about five people took me up on this. Most people email back and goes, "No, I really enjoyed it," you know. But um, and I actually sent the I actually sent out a letter, uh, an email to seven thousand people, to everyone in the group, to explain that the talk which I had done was not up to my own standard. And if it's not up to my standard, it should definitely not be up to other people's standards either. And I've said I've actually given people who attended a free talk. And I just want to say this was a single blip, but basically, look how much stuff we've got coming up. That weekend was the biggest sales on interesting talks that we've ever yeah. had. Wow. Simply by being accountable to myself and by being honest and having that relationship and that dialogue with the people who you're serving. And this is what you have to think about. You don't become a business owner to become a bug. You become a business owner to serve. Yes. That's what businesses do. If you just want to make money quick and stuff, just I don't know, just win the lottery or something, because that's not how money works. Money works by if you're serving people. Now, if you're making good money and you're really serving, that's when it all starts looking to connect in and it gets to do stuff like this and call it work. Oh, well, I've put this down with work. Um, 
and you actually start to do things you really want. But the thing is, it's like I can only do a talk like this, you know, an interview like this, because everything I say is absolutely backed up with the things which I'm doing in business at the, and the things I can't hide. You can look at how much money I'm making from one project on interesting talks. It's still there. You know, people know how much it is. You can see the sales every day, how much is going through. Okay. So everything which I'm talking about is not theory, it's stuff which is currently in practice in my other businesses. Um, and so I put the straightforward marketing system together but people want to learn a bit about sort of the way that I work and the way that I kind of put a business together. Um, mainly kind of say self-taught. I have been through a lot of marketing stuff as well, but most of it's kind of self-taught. But they all work. All the systems work and they're very adaptable to different business. Like basically business to consumer. I don't know really much about business to business, like I said. Business to consumer. If you sell somebody something, a product or a service in exchange for money, Chances are, by going through this uh, video product, you're going to learn how to do it well. Um, and so, I, I just like I just like to say, because when, when I first started, I started with 80 other businesses, and there's only now three that remain. And uh, I, I I just don't like people seeing fail in yeah. business, and I think that it does need a healthy dose of reality. And so, I kind of come in there, and this is why I call it straightforward. Because everything I do is kind of straightforward. It's not about making you feel good and say, "Oh, Jim, that's a great business idea." You know, you just need to, you know, get investment. It's probably not. You know, it's probably not going to do very well at all. You know, so. Um, but I make people aware of this, and this is kind of very much my style, and I'm not apologetic for it. I don't feel bad about it at all. Excuse me. Um, but I help people to to kind of make money and provide a business that serves. And if you want to have an idea of just the, sort of what that does, check out the group reviews, check out the the, the feedback from events, mm. check out the testimonials that I do, check out by don't bother them. But you can speak to any speaker who's ever spoken at interesting talks and see what they say. You know, my reputation literally spreads around the world now. We have, we've had people come to speak. We've had two from America. We had one woman who found me via social media and applied to come speak, came from Texas. She went home, told her group about us so much that somebody else on her group came from Texas to actually do a, a talk for us. Wow. So we've had somebody from Germany, now Sean Michael Andrews, um, a hypnotist, world's fastest hypnotist. We've had somebody from Bali, somebody from uh, Malawi, and there's another one. We've had people from all over. Uh, we've had people from Ireland as well, I think. And so, yeah. basically, because this is the reputation again. You know, your your reputation is what people say about you when you're not there, and your character is when you behave when nobody else is around or to somebody who can't offer you anything. And so that's kind of how I kind of live my my sort of my business life. I and my 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 personal life as as well, but. You know, I, I don't mind helping people. I don't mind giving stuff away. I don't mind just helping people because I'm I'm doing all right, you know? And I always think you should always give away a certain part of your your time or your products or your service. Uh, you will always reap it back, but you shouldn't give it away with the intention of reaping it back. But, you know, you usually do. That's right, yeah. So, so that's kind of my, my kind of thing. Look to serve. The thing is, there's so much... There's so much kind of aspirational living type of rubbish and nonsense, and you know, I was reading this really, really sad uh, uh, sociology paper recently, and it was about asking children between the ages of like 11 and 14 what they want to be when they grow up, and it's something like over 40% said they want to be famous, <laughs> but not famous for being an actor, not famous for being an athlete, not famous for being a scientist just for, just or a for doctor, being just for being famous. Yeah. And you know a lot of the celebrities that we have at the moment are extremely thin. Uh, it's an extremely thin amount of talent of what they actually do. I suppose marketing is their talent and PR is their talent. But if you want to make good money and over a long period of time, you have to be very good at something. You have to be very good at providing a particular product or a particular service and the marketing. It goes hand in hand. But you don't just make a lot of money over a long period of time by by wanting to, you know, by this whole make a million overnight, learn how to invest, free investment seminars, wealth creation. It's, of course, it's not going to work. 
you know what I mean? Of course it's not going to work. Um, and there'll always be success stories, but you know, there's always success stories. But yeah, if you, if you, you, get, you, it, if you yeah. get it quick, you're probably going to lose it quick as well anyway. Well, this is the whole thing, you know, it's like, it's, again, I'm, I'm kind of making up statistics, but it's something like if you're earning less than 30 grand a year, and if you win over a million pounds on the lottery, within a year, you are more, you are likely to be more depressed, more stressed, out of work, and in a worse financial situation than you were before, than when you, when you won it. And the simple fact is that you don't know how to um, control money. Um, you know, because you, you haven't really dealt with large amounts, and most of the time, having large amounts of money just gives you more ways and more resources in which you can mess up. Yeah, it really does. It really is. So, so I think that's why I kind of limit my earnings in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm no angel, you know. So, I would, uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, go to interesting talks in my in my Cadillac with champagne and bunny girl. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, man. No. Table um, services. Like, <laughs> any last things you thought? I know, I know you're itching to go. I could do another four or five hours, to be honest. But um, <laughs> any kind of last things you want to ask? Well, me? No, no, I can't go for that long. <laughs> I know. And, and you other, do we have any other questions or anything? Uh, let me just check. Hang on a second. I, I think that's. Um, I'll just check my my page. Hang on a second. <laughs> Uh, no, that's it. So, Matt, I want to um, <laughs> I want to thank you for coming on the show. Ask, really... ask, me, ask me one last question, then I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> make make a question up. Ask me one last question. Or I'll, I'll ask I'll you one. You okay, you you ask I me one. one. Okay. It has to be quick though. I ask this all of right. all the guests coming on. Um, what do you think is what do you believe is your secret to success? Ah, okay. So I kind of touched upon this a bit earlier on, and the. The secret to success is, is hard work over a long period of time. I met this guy once called David Straker, Strader Straker, um, and he has this website, uh, ChangingMinds.org, I believe it is, and he gets like a million hits a month, right? And I said to him, "What's the secret of your website getting so many hits?" He said, "Well, I write one blog article a day, minimum." And I have done for like ten years, and he said that is the actual um, secret to success. I think when when my sort of secret to success is then uh, I will talk about it a little bit, and this is the whole thing about motivation. If you're doing something for a selfish reason, and when I say selfish reason, I don't necessarily mean you, know, you have bad intentions. It's just if your business does well, you're the only one who really prospers from. You know what I mean? You're the only one who kind of benefits from it. When my business does well, loads of people benefit from it. And it also puts me in a certain place of responsibility to serve people. So I don't need to be motivated to go to interesting talks because I've got to go there to run the event. If I was running it purely for money and there's not many people going, it'd be easy not to go or just to pay somebody else to do it, to be perfectly honest. Hmm. So when it comes to sort of success, you have to take responsibility for what it is that you're doing. You have to educate yourself in how to do it properly and how to market it. You have to be competent in the product or service that you're supplying. And you'll be happy enough for you and your family and your friends to use it. You know what I mean? So you've got it's got to be a real product that you're using. This is why I don't like celebrity endorsements, because you know, they just don't use them. Um, the new way of celebrity endorsements is to do like spy camera getting because people are more likely to buy something knowing a celebrity uses it in real life rather than uh, commercial. So this is kind of like the new marketing strategy they're using at the moment, like paid placement, product placement. Um, and again, you, you, you've got to be good at what you do and deliver it on a consistent basis and it's over a long period of time. There's no get rich, get rich quick. You know, get rich quick, you'll get poor quick. You'll get poor quicker than you got rich, you know what I mean? There's no kind of short... Well, there is shortcuts, and I definitely think the, the actual marketing that I put together is kind of possibly the biggest shortcuts you can take, but you can't cut corners. Hmm. There are faster ways of doing... I wish that the product I made now... I wish I'd watched that 10 years ago. I couldn't do it because I had dial-up. It would have worked. <laughs> but, you know, but... <laughs> but but I, but you know what I mean. I wish I know then why. I wish I don't know then why. Why I know now, but uh, I didn't. But I've learned it, and 
I didn't really learn it the hard way, to be honest, um, um, because I was also quite mindful about what I was doing. So a lot of people will have this idea of success and will have a goal. I don't have any goals because I think goals are actually very limiting in many ways. I actually focus on what's happening at the moment. I know the direction I'm going, but I focus on what I'm doing now. So my goal at the moment is focusing on the talks that I'm doing in April. That's my goal. People say, where do you see interesting talks in two years? I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I don't, because yeah. the, the way that we're doing it and the way that I've always done business is I focused on doing the best I possibly can in the present, and people will then come to you. When they see something doing well, they will come to you with opportunities, and that's how I've always done things. So the secret to success is make sure everybody else benefits as much as, if not more, than you do. I'm not saying you don't pay yourself. I'm just saying make sure everybody else benefits from it. You've got to be really good to work with. Yeah. You've got to be really good to work with. Com being late for stuff or being unprepared or just you, you don't deserve to do the role which you've appointed yourself, you know? Yeah. So you've got to be competent and you've got to be consistent. If you're not consistent, you've got to own up to it and compensate those for who you've let down. So that shows character as well. Um, and again, it, when you have responsibility to people, you don't need to be motivated because you've got responsibility. Mm. You know what I mean? You don't need to motivate yourself when you've got a responsibility. Now, if, it, if you are just doing something purely for yourself, you will always have to motivate yourself because nobody else benefits. When you are responsible to others and other people's livelihoods or whatever it might be depends on you doing something, you, you do it, you know? So the way I motivate myself is by making sure I've got lots of things and appointments and things throughout the week which I have to do. And if I don't do, other people will, uh, will lose out or whatever, you know, they will, they will also... Um, they won't benefit, I won't benefit. So you've got to have these peppered all the way through what you're doing to make sure you're, you're doing things out of responsibility and not out of motivation. Trying to motivate yourself every day is just a, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just stupid. It's hard work. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now the thing is, if you've got to do that, if you've got to get up and sort of, you know, jump around and beat your chest and walk on coals and that kind of shit, um, you know, I don't know how long you can do that for. Do you know what I mean? How how many times can you get up and it can't be good for you? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I don't think we we do focus far too much on being sort of people think right that when they're positive and motivated they have this unending abundant energy that just gets them to like power through to say like, well, that is literally delusional. That's just stupid. The way I think about this is when you're doing a business, you have to fall in love with that business. Now, the thing is, most of love is transactional. <laughs> it's very, you know what I mean? It's sort of like a partnership, right? Now, you get certain things out of that relationship, but you have to put certain things in. And the thing is, it's going to be hard work. It's going to be a struggle sometimes. And a lot of the time, it's going to piss you off. But you have to take on the fact that that's what, is, that's what it is. You know, the thing is, if you look at how to be a millionaire in nine hours, it's basically they're on their beachfront mansion, they wake up and they may go for a little meeting with all these people with clipboards and then they go off on a jet ski and then they go like, you know, stroke a monkey and then go parachuting and then go out with a supermodel and then go to like stream. I don't know what job that is. <laughs> that job doesn't exist. That job existed for one day whilst they were filming there. It's like, even if you look at Richard Branson, I reckon a lot of Richard Branson's life will not be this kind of super happy or even going. A lot of it is just hard work and graft. Of course, and yeah. So I think just developing a good work ethic and it's just knowing that you're not just going to sail through or power through things or motivate yourself or by creating responsibilities and just getting on with it because nobody cares about your excuses for why something didn't happen. They really don't. So literally just getting on with it. Um, if I'm late for an interesting talk, so people don't care if the tube was late. If I, was, I was late. So that's why I'm always there very early. You know, I was there, have a coffee, read the paper. Well, you know. So responsibility. Responsibility is key. If you want the rewards of you know, the freedom, 
about having a, a real boss and all these different things, you you don't just get that. You've got to actually work for it, and you work for it every day. And I do think, especially in Britain as well, we do have a, um, a diminishing work ethic. Um, we want to be these internet or dot-com millionaires, and we want to sort of not do the hard work. Well, the thing is, when the people aren't there not doing the hard work, I will be, and that's why, regardless what business I go in, I'll always do well. Um, and it's not because I'm necessarily particularly better than anybody in what I do with the business itself, but I know I have a good idea of how small-scale business works. I don't know anything about corporate at all, but small-scale business. Um, somebody asked me the other day, they said, would I survive uh, a zombie uh, apocalypse? I said, if there's a zombie apocalypse, I'm going to be selling bullets and fresh water. You know what I mean? So I will always survive. I'll always adapt to what's going on. And uh, that, again, it's learning to adapt to what's going on now. You know, we've been through a you know, huge financial recession. It's learning to adapt. A lot of people I know haven't adapted and are struggling. They're still expecting to get what was happening six or seven years ago when they're pri you know, when everything worked out really well for them, and it isn't now. And they're angry. And so, you know, because they're angry that it hasn't worked out and stuff like that. So I adapt to what's going on now. And so that's why, again, I'll always be, I'm never going to be uh, this multimillionaire that lies. I, I get bored, to be fair, you know what I mean? If, if I was like, right, well, I'm going to go lay on a beach and have a cocktail, I'd do that for, um, I'd do that for a day. I might go on a jet ski. But then they go, oh, well, let's go jet skiing tomorrow. Like, ah, I did that earlier. I don't really need to do it again. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> I want to go back and actually do some work now. So you've got to like the work. And really, really important as well, last thing, is you've really got to like and respect the people that you're serving. If you don't like or respect the people you're serving, then everything you do will uh, be on shaky foundations. So, Because the thing is, you're serving people. You don't want to let them down, essentially. So. Yeah, exactly right. Um, Matt, I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. Um, there was a few, I think there was more than one secret to success in there. There was a lot of, a lot of good info in there in that last question, so I want to thank you for answering that. No, you're very welcome. And, um, seriously, mate, thank you for coming on the show. And put, I'll just bring up that link one more time. Cool. Um, oh, let me see. It's curious. So it's straightforward marketing. Uh, straightforward marketing system com forward slash elite and you can go in there and get this uh, going to get the sign up and get those seven free resources to help build your business mm -hmm. so Matt um, once again thank you for coming on the show a real, well. real pleasure real pleasure um, and thank you to those let me just uh, change this back uh, thank you for to those that are tuning in from home um, as you know, this show is for you, so please come and interact live every week, uh, 8 p.m. GMT, uh, 4, I, be, I believe because of Daylight Savings, it's 4 p.m. Eastern Time at the moment and 1 p.m. Pacific Time, uh, but usually it's 3 p.m. Eastern Time once uh, out we go back to the Daylight Savings. So thank you again for tuning in to the Elite Entrepreneur Show. Com. I really look forward to bringing you the show next week where we have one of the top business coaches in the world, one of the top 20 business coaches in the world. So be sure to tune in to that 8 p.m. GMT on the Elite Entrepreneur Show. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you later. Cheers.